what if you don't have an idea? What if you don't figure out what your collection is about? What if you can't make it work? All of these things can't stop you from just going headfirst into that process. This week's episode is, yes, a little bit about research, but mostly about how to find that ever elusive inspiration. Two years ago, I quit my job to become a fashion designer, and now we are making my first collection together. My name is Lee Thayer. Welcome to episode two. So I actually looked up what everybody uses for their mood boards and it's like this foam cord stuff. I wanna look official, you know, so I couldn't find the giant ones, but I thought this was still pretty nice. And then one thing that allows me to do is like take things off the wall, put it back up, and then I can just pin things in as I need and hopefully as the collection progresses. Why do we do research? The reason we do research is to find inspiration for what our collection is going to be about, what are the themes, maybe silhouettes, what is motivating the creation of this collection. We're actually going to start with inspiration, which will lead us then into research. The best way to get a bad answer for what is good inspiration is to ask anybody other than yourself, honestly. Inspiration is such a personal thing. For me, it took having a teacher actually say to me when I was struggling based on a prompt of his to find inspiration what's that thing in the corner that you're working on and I was like oh this is something that I'm creating it was super print heavy he immediately was like instead of draping with what you're draping with why don't you grab a print why don't you start working from there and that was such a huge unlock for me because I am so inspired by textiles. One of the first places that I'm starting with for my inspiration gathering is with the textiles that I already have. I did give this corner a nice little tidy up and clean this weekend in preparation. The first thing that I really wanted to do was get all of them onto a board to start seeing what I'm working with. And this is just true swatching. There's just a little square of each one that I'm putting up kind of by textile weight. Not necessarily because they're gonna be used in that way, but I do think it makes sense. I have a full swatch board now of all of my fabric. As I'm coming up with other boards with different inspiration and things, I can always just kind of move it over and pin it. But then if I'm looking for something potentially complementary with that, for example, this is a Keith Haring piece of art with a Celine look from Pop Magazine. The colors are just so good. This captures that feel of that red orange. I've made a swatch there. Then I might lean into how that denim might feel by putting something like this here. Okay, so if I use these two fabrics together, I'm gonna achieve a feel that's similar to what's kind of captured in this image. When it comes to collating and gathering of inspiration, not every idea has to be completely brand new. This is something that you don't see as much in like student collections, but when you think about your favorite designer, you're probably going to see some through lines that come from their preferences, life experiences, etc. A couple of things that I always lean into. I love a jumpsuit. I really like thicker textured fabrics. As you can see, like everything I'm wearing I made and it's all a little bit heavier and not quite exactly what you would necessarily expect something to be made out of. I always found vintage garments really inspiring and I've had the privilege or good fortune, I guess, to be able to collect a lot of really interesting pieces over the years. Today I'm going to photograph so I can get them on the mood board so that we can have a think about how those might be translated. This is a vintage French stage costume and it's completely ridiculous because it has to be, because you think about it, if you're in an opera house or something like that, you have to be able to see it all the way from the back. But I absolutely love all of the texture on this. Also, the contrast of this blue 
so that you'll see it from a million miles away is so so fabulous so it's not that i'm going to design a replica of this jacket but there's elements of it that are just so incredibly inspiring i also do have some other elements that are work in progress so i had made all of these puffed granny squares after a project didn't turn out the way that i wanted it to to kind of juxtapose the homewareness that is so commonly associated with crochet with something like silk organza which is considered evening wear and just so luxurious there was a swatch on the board of something like that but all of this to say that you don't need to start from ground zero so this is an idea i want to go forward with i don't know but the only way to figure it out is to get it on the board right The first vlog came out yesterday and I want to clarify something because I think it's important for this week's episode. I did commit to creating an entire collection in 13 weeks with 12 looks without already knowing the theme and the inspiration. Was that terrifying? If the idea of me jumping into this without knowing basically what the outcome is gonna be terrifies you. That actually makes me excited and, and hopeful even because that's why I'm documenting this whole thing. You never get to see this part of the process. It is intimidating and I'm gonna talk about that, but if you can harness this stage, this is when really the magic happens. Prior to yesterday, I thought that my challenge going into mood board, finding inspiration process was going to be editing down ideas. I did exactly what I feel like I should last night, which is I was looking up male dancers in rehearsal clothing on the VNA website, looking at theater costumes. I took a look at Tom Brown's book after watching another video on his process, which I think is really interesting. I'll link that for you to watch after this. And I woke up with an absolute deluge of ideas. I couldn't even get my day started without sitting down and I just needed to get them all out of my head. What seemed to have been happening last night and maybe even while I was sleeping was my brain was starting to connect the dots between all of these different images that I had been looking at, some of which were that research component of kind of trying to go down a rabbit hole away from conventional fashion resources. Twyla Tharp calls this scratching, which I adore the concept of just looking at things and trying to have that idea take shape somewhere in your brain. What's actually been the real challenge for me is not jumping directly into design mode, being able to capture and visualize the ideas on the mood boards, those building blocks that lead to the design that popped into my head. With 12 looks, that is a lot of designing to have to do. If I just capture that finished idea and put it on the mood board, it's kind of stuck there. However, if I can articulate all of the pieces that are leading up to how I came up with that idea, now I can potentially connect it with other things on the board and come up with even more design ideas. So that's why today it's frantically trying to think about which images really stuck with me that are what I need to actually get on the board to articulate a concept. It most certainly has been a week. It's the end of the week now. Despite everything that has happened, I did have two revelations this week. We've been talking about the theme of finding inspiration and doing research, and I have been looking at these fashion designer sketchbooks before I go to bed every night. They ask questions like, when are you most creative? What time of day? Do you have a routine? How do you find inspiration? Reading about other people's processes help remind me to keep doing the thing. And one of the things around that is also the fact that aha moments don't really 
happen when you plan for them to. You'll take all this dedicated time to be sitting with your material, your inspiration, but then it will be when you're on a walk, when you're exercising, something like that, when all of a sudden these ideas just kind of come together when you're not trying to have them necessarily pop into the forefront of your mind, but that's really how most art works. The first revelation was really about these books because we talked about how scary it is to commit to designing a collection without knowing what it's gonna be about, but that's the job. That's the job if you're a fashion designer, to every season show up and say, okay, no idea what this is gonna be, no idea if it's gonna be a great idea, if it's gonna be a terrible idea, but somewhere along the way, we'll find it. In these books, they ask this question that is, when do you have your eureka moment? When do you know a design is gonna work? And it hit me that up until that point, none of these designers necessarily know what their collection is gonna be, if it's working, but there's a moment where they go, ah, there it is. But the fact that so much of the process happens before that eureka moment made me realize that that is what makes somebody a designer. What unifies fashion designers isn't the ability to sketch, isn't sewing, isn't the ability to translate a piece of art into a garment. It's the willingness to potentially fail season after season to not just jump off that cliff knowing you're gonna have to build your parachute on the way down, but choosing to and being okay with that. And what a powerful thing because how many of us approach things as if we're not gonna fail and we're gonna do all of this work in the direction just trusting that it'll be a success, right? I, I came up with that metaphor of jumping off a cliff and building your parachute on the way down, but I had taken a note last month actually that was a quote that said this much better so this is a quote from kurt vonnegut we have to be continually jumping off cliffs and finding our wings on the way down and that was about creativity and being an artist in his case obviously being a writer but i think that's a really good analogy also for what it takes to be a fashion designer and to loop us back to if you thought that this was a crazy undertaking, it isn't, it's just the job. I am sure that I'm gonna be able to make this collection in 13 weeks. I know I'm going to do it, but if you knew you were gonna succeed at that thing that you wanted to do, then what's your takeaway? For me, it's, well, I better get down to work and figure out what the heck the collection's gonna be about. The big takeaway of the week, do we know what the theme is? In theory, yes, actually. What was my eureka moment? Well, again, I don't have any designs yet, but as I was adding all of these ideas to the mood board and trying to combine them with some past ideas that I had, it hit me yesterday morning, Thursday morning, walking the dog. All of a sudden, the opening look for the runway show just crystallized in my head. And it was a combination of a lot of the things that were on the board, but it was also conveying a feeling. It was this feeling of kind of like exposure and then having a theme of building something. I realized I didn't want to be restrained by wearability, which I was really happy with because I was worried I was gonna make something that just wasn't that exciting. I don't have the means to put this into production tomorrow. Instead, this collection is much more about who I am as a designer, as an artist. I wanted to A, make it more abstract, and then B, I did want it to kind of tell, not necessarily tell a story, but pull from my story and my experience. I'll give you a window into something that factored into that. So I did ballet for the first 15 years from when I was three till I was 18. And I have a lot of good things that came out of that. Staring at your body all day, every day, for 15 years, like yes, will probably mess with your head quite a bit, but it also will help you to see fit really well. And then getting fitted for costumes my entire life makes it easy for me to fit a garment. A very common apprenticeship that people will get after going to fashion school or during fashion school is with a ballet company or an opera house. And I grew up 
basically in costume shops, getting to see how things are made, getting to understand how you make a garment to be movable and all these things. I hate when people do ballet references in their collections because it's often very like on the nose and it's just like, it's what you think ballet dancers will wear and translating it into clothing. Like that's, that's just not interesting to me because for me, my experience of doing ballet for so long was about feeling exposed every single day of my life. Like it's how close can you get to being naked while basically drawing lines on your body so you can see exactly if your leg is straight and all of these things. So I have a very visceral reaction to the unflattering, horrific like ballet leotard and tights costume. But I realize that that kind of revulsion that I feel could be harnessed and used very differently in a collection done by me as just one of the elements, but that it was just such a involuntarily vulnerable feeling with everything happening right now, the election results this week, just how I'm feeling, maybe harnessing part of that and having a way to translate it via wearable art as a metaphor might actually be valuable. So I'll be excited to show you how that develops as we go, but where I am left with this week, in theory next week I should start sketching. I am a very hands-on kind of designer. I love working with fabrics, manipulating fabrics. That means next week is actually going to be about having a lot of fun. We're at a stage where I need to start messing with these fabrics, seeing what they can do. So next week the plan is maybe sketching, definitely fabric manipulation, come up with a clear color palette. So my homework is going to be to start prepping materials, but just because I'm moving on from some of the mood boarding concepts doesn't mean the mood boards are done. Textile manipulation is such a huge part of the ideation process. So my goal by next week is to have the boards filled with all kinds of different fabric manipulation so that I can start jumping into the sketching process with some new interesting ideas but I would love to hear from you what your thoughts are on this first week of finding inspiration and doing some research. Is it what you thought it would be? What questions do you have about this process? And I will look forward to having a little chat with you in the comments. I do have a little substack that I started. It's just Lee Thayer the usual to get some more written ideas down if there's anything that I'm ruminating on I guess. I still have a lot more research to do trying to pursue this idea that I have in my head trying to make things different than what you would expect them to be so I'm hoping I'm hoping it translates but again I'd love to hear what you're thinking so far. I will see you next Monday and I'm so excited. Thanks for watching.